It has been brought to my attention that many people are boycotting Black Ops Cold War's Battle Pass in order to protest skill-based matchmaking. Skill-based matchmaking was recently tested by Drifter and Exclusive Ace, and Exclusive Ace will tell you that their sample size was nowhere near perfect, and that they're gonna have to revisit it in the future. Basically meaning that, although their tests are interesting when it comes to what they found, they're not 100% definitive proof. Also, COD developers have told us in the past that skill-based matchmaking is something that's constantly being tweaked behind the scenes. So even if Ace and Drifter's testings were 100%, it could change in a month, and you'll and you'll never know. And Ace, I believe, is aware of this because he wants to revisit skill-based matchmaking later on. I think another test around January, you know, after Christmas and after several updates and Season 1's been out for a little bit, I think that might be a better time to start testing again, but Either way, they don't have any definitive evidence, they just found a lot of interesting indicators. I recommend you look up Exclusive Ace and Drifter skill-based matchmaking testing, because it is interesting stuff, it's just not definitive 100% solid proof stuff, and even if it was, it could change. So, the idea that certain people out there, I don't want to name any names, believe that if you don't buy the Battle Pass for Cold War, you'll be sending a message directly to Activision that they should disable skill-based matchmaking, reduce it, or at least open up about it. This is the funniest thing I've ever heard. So, if you're capable of boycotting the Battle Pass, that means you are owning the game. You can't boycott something you have no access to. So you own the game, you spent 60 to $70 on Black Ops Cold War, but now, so you can ring your video game activism bell, you're going to not buy the $10 cosmetics pass. You know, the weapons are going to be free, and the pass is going to contain the in-game currency required for you to purchase the next battle pass. So, it's actually a pretty pro-consumer thing. The only thing you're paying for is cosmetic bullshit, which is awesome. Activision's blog post before the launch of Modern Warfare still remains true. They're not doing bullshit RNG anymore. So, we're, we're done with the supply drops. And now what we have is their current battle pass and seasonal content drop system, that I believe, while flawed as hell, is miles, miles, just mm, hundreds of miles better than what we were getting before. The community isn't being split up by content releases, there are not weapons locked behind RNG boxes. If it affects gameplay, it's free for everybody. And if Cold War handles its post-launch content the same way Modern Warfare did, I'll have nothing but praise for the system. The quality of the content in the system might be up for debate, but Overall, the system we're seeing now is a response to our criticism and our complaining about what happened after Call of Duty Ghosts, with supply drops and season passes and gambling for weapons became the norm. Advanced Warfare Black Ops 3, to an extent Infinite Warfare, they tried to reduce it, but it was still there. COD World War 2 tried to reduce it, still there. Black Ops 4 looked like they had gotten rid of it and then brought it back later in the life cycle, and now... That just seems like distant history. When I was doing my little retrospectives on the 8th generation of Call of Duty, the biggest problem is returning to those games and just seeing piles and piles of content that are just not accessible to me unless I go and open a bunch of supply drops or grind for a ridiculous amount of time. And that's gone now. I mean, even in Modern Warfare, when a season ends, if you didn't get the weapons in that season, then you can just complete a tedious yet simple challenge to earn that weapon. Us as gamers like to believe there's some sort of oppressive phantom force behind the curtain making our experiences worse, and it's much more fun to think of Activision as just the bad guy. And you're not very wrong for thinking that. Activision's been, well, Activision this entire last generation, which is that, which is to say shitty. It feels like people have a problem with the fact that Activision did something right and are sticking to it. Now I'll review the Battle Pass and I'll review the content they put in it and I'll talk about it in a video later. Even though the content's free, it's affecting the product that I bought, so I do think it should be reviewed and scrutinized a little bit. But overall, the seasonal system and the Battle Pass system is a response to our complaints as a community. Now, that's rare because there is no community when it comes to Call of Duty. There are too many people, it's much too large, it's much too diverse, there's too much variance in between people's preferences. We're not a community, okay? We are people that enjoy a video game, okay? People staying in a hotel or an apartment complex are not a community. 
Okay, that's not how this works. We do not all have a common goal and a common place to go for it. There is no Church of Call of Duty that we congregate at every Sunday. And we have a common goal and we could discuss things civilly. That is not what goes on here at all. I'm not dismissing it, I'm saying this about really gaming in general. Okay, just because two people enjoy Kingdom Hearts does not mean they're part of the Kingdom Hearts community. But despite how random our voices have to seem to the company, and despite how many conflicting things they hear on a daily basis, one thing rang true. People are tired of the way Call of Duty deals with post-launch content and microtransactions. Modern Warfare was the response to that. It was the fix for that, the remedy for that. And we're seeing it replicated here in Cold War. And as long as it's replicated and repeated properly, I'll have nothing but nice things to say. It's the content within the system that I think I can criticize, but the system itself is damn near flawless for a AAA shooter. When it came to Titanfall 2 and Battlefield 5, EA completely failed their promise to deliver free, regular updates of content to make the game feel more substantial over time. Whereas Modern Warfare kept the content flowing all year round. And I'm guessing one of the ways they funded that was us buying the microtransactions. You know, the microtransactions that are not random, they only affect you cosmetically, and are potentially funding later updates of content. So the idea that not buying the cosmetics in a battle pass is somehow going to send a message to Activision or Treyarch and the shareholders that uh, they need to reduce skill-based matchmaking or be upfront about it. You might think that sounds pretty delusional. Well, it's not. It's not a delusion at all, it's a ruse. What you're seeing is people fighting their buyer's remorse. In contrast to Modern Warfare, people that bought Cold War felt like they got jibbed out of their money. Cold War's crappy launch practices and just how low the game is on content reminds people of how anti-consumer Call of Duty can be. Charging $70 for the smallest launch Call of Duty I've ever seen is laughable. And it is to a lot of other people, but they're not laughing, they're upset about it. So skill-based matchmaking, as far as I can tell, this is obviously not a fact, but as far as I can tell, it's sort of the scapegoat here. People have been mad about skill-based matchmaking since, ah, geez, I don't know, advanced warfare? So it's funny to me now that all these years later, these people that have already purchased the game and spent money on it are quote-unquote speaking with their wallets to reverse a matchmaking system that nobody can definitively pin down how it works. Now, we have a better idea now than we did because of Exclusive Ace and Drifter, and I do not agree with strict skill-based matchmaking at all in public matches, trust me. But you're gonna boycott the system that they implemented to please you because their last systems were so bad after you already purchased the game. You see, this is why I call this fake activism. Because real activism would be actually sacrificing something to make a larger point. I thought it was funny how many people told me that the game was unacceptable to them and nobody should buy it, and then I was told that I shouldn't tell people to wait for fixes and that there should be some sort of justice provided to them, and it's like, you bought the game already. You're gonna tell me I can't tell you to wait for, for new content and bug fixes when you already bought the game without waiting. Okay, so if you really want to be an activist, if you really want your game to get better, have the balls to not buy it. Or if you've already bought it and that's a mistake in your mind, pursue a refund every way possible, and if it's not obtainable, uninstall the game and don't give them a player number. Let them watch their player numbers drop off. You want to talk to Activision? Let them see that their game is losing players, because Activision, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, they know that when a game loses players, it loses money. So, you wanna speak with your wallet or your time? Cause speaking with your time means putting the game down and not giving them a player base. Speaking with your wallet would have meant not buying the game in the first place. Okay, there's no reason to pre-order Call of Duty, guys. It's not gonna run out. You didn't have to have it on launch day. This is petulant, it's whiny, it's sad. I know it's sort of the trend of the last five years or so, to disguise petulant, whiny behavior as activism, but this is a whole new bag of shit. Call of Duty players have been angry at skill-based matchmaking since 20-fucking-14. Okay, it's not a surprise that it's in Cold War, so don't act like you bought the game and didn't know what the skill-based matchmaking situation was gonna be like. Did you think they were gonna turn it off for you? And why do I have people in my comment section saying that there's no skill-based matchmaking in Black Ops 4? Maybe not anymore, because the player base on it would be so small, so they wouldn't be able to do any matchmaking manipulation, but I definitely noticed 
the same babysitting matchmaking bullshit in Black Ops 4 that I noticed in COD World War 2 and Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered and Infinite Warfare. And that dates all the way back to around Call of Duty Ghosts as early as I can remember. Skill-based matchmaking's been a thing for a while, and the reason it doesn't innately bother me is because it doesn't affect me in the same way people are describing, and there's so much potential variance in how skill-based matchmaking is affecting people that I feel like it's disingenuous for me to, you know, get upset about it when it's something that is probably changing on a weekly or monthly basis on a player to player basis. I'm not in the business of guessing at phantoms and even the testing that we do have about skill based matchmaking from some content creators that I do respect and trust, they even have to say that their testing isn't conclusive, it only shows indicators, not 100% definitive proof. So fine, boycott the battle pass in the game you already purchased to protest a system that we don't even understand yet. I want to give real props to people that actually are boycotting the game based on their principles. So shout out to the people that didn't buy the game or uninstalled the game because they don't want to give it any player numbers, or the people that looked for a refund as fast as possible. Those are not things that I think are necessary, but if you're actually willing to show your discontent in a way that matters, because this boycott the battle pass thing is ridiculous. And if you need to know why, repeat the video. See you when I see you guys. Goodbye.